Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? So if there are two positions primarily we've talked about with the New Orleans Saints, it's been running back and tight end, the, the need for, for an upgrade. And we talked earlier a little bit about the running back spot. But the Saints have uh, made a, a transaction. Um, they have waived undrafted free agent defensive back Jack Kerner. He was out of Iowa. Uh, to make room for free agent tight end Cahale uh, Waring. So... A quick backstory here of Cahale Waring uh, from San Diego State. He had he came out of college as, as a, a third-round pick out of San Diego State by the Houston Texans, and he was basically drafted uh, because he was just a, a really good athlete. That's kind of the, the backstory there with uh, Cahale Waring. But it just never really materialized in Houston. He only played in nine career games, Three catches on seven targets. He was let, so he played the 2020 season and then uh, was waived in 2021. I'm sorry, he played two and a half seasons in Houston. Uh, he was waived in 2021 this past year and then played a game each in Buffalo and Jacksonville. So bounced around a little bit and now he's landed in New Orleans. Um, maybe, maybe they they strike it rich here. Maybe it's it's an example of you know, finding a player who fi who just didn't fit someone else's system that might be integrated perfectly into yours. And if we're being honest, the Saints kind of have a history here at the tight end position. They, they did this with Jimmy Graham, right? I mean, famously did it with Jimmy Graham when he became an all-pro. Guy was a third-round draft pick, incidentally, who was really a basketball player in Miami, hadn't played much football, and became an all-pro tight end. And they've tried to replicate it with those pass-catching tight ends. And they've tried to find those guys in the draft. Most recently, of course, it was Adam Troutman a couple of years ago, who just unfortunately has not really materialize the way that they had hoped. And, I mean, look, they let Jared Cook walk because they were confident that Adam Troutman was going to take that next step this year, and it just didn't happen for him. Uh, in the 13 games he played, he was targeted 43 times, caught only 27 balls for 263 yards and two scores. Uh, I'm, I'm very hopeful for Adam Troutman, but I can't say I'm optimistic about Adam Troutman. We just haven't seen it on the field, the reason to think all of a sudden he's going to hit that that – parabolic curve and become the player that I, I wouldn't even say that, that Jimmy Graham was. I'm not expecting him to be an all-pro, but to be a serviceable starting tight end in the league. And outside of Adam Troutman, your options aren't great. You've got Nick Van Nett, who of course played last year, wasn't really the pass catcher, caught only nine balls in seven games. You know, Jawan Johnson is the interesting one because he was a wide receiver at Oregon, who's a bigger wide receiver. They try to convert to sort of that flex tight end, and he could be a really good you know, pass catching option as a tight end. I know people always mention Taysom Hill, but it's so important to remember that when they talk about Taysom Hill and they talk about the position he plays, they say like the F tight end, like they're not talking about tight end. They're talking about Taysom Hill in the Taysom Hill role. He's he's not going to be the attached tight end that's a blocker like a traditional. You're not talking about George Kittle. You know what I mean? You're, you're not talking about Kelsey. You're talking about Taysom Hill doing his Taysom Hill role. And you're still looking for that that every down prototypical tight end that can catch passes and that can also block. I, I, I don't know if Cahale Waring can be that guy. He was a really good pass catching target at San Diego State. It hasn't exactly transitioned to the NFL level, but maybe in this offseason as the Saints look for that option, he's a guy that that might surprise them and, and realize some of the potential. It's also worth noting that he's coming into an offense that utilizes the tight end and always has. They didn't necessarily do that in Houston. But in New Orleans, as we mentioned, going back to Jimmy Graham or even before when you talk about how they used Dan Arnold or Jeremy Shockey all the way through you know, Jimmy Graham. And then, I mean, even when they went and, you know, splurged with Kobe Fleener in free agency, even though that didn't work, or Jared Cook, who was very hot and cold, they've always found a way to integrate that tight end position and put a value on it, which is why maybe this is the right situation. I, I under, again, when you're talking about a guy that's an undrafted free agent who was. A, a free agent who is not currently with a team who you get on a bargain basement deal to bring in to try to earn a roster spot and compete for it. I, I like the idea of what they've done here. In a perfect world, in a perfect world, Adam Troutman would would hit that parabolic curve 
and become a a legitimate, capable, competent, every down starter in the NFL. And maybe this is the year for him to do that. Now entering year three. So perhaps we'll see that from Adam Troutman. We'll see that growth year to year. But if not, at least you have another guy there to uh, to push him and see if it can work out that way. Again, the Saints keep telling you, like they keep telling you where their holes are. They're they're aware of it by the fact that they're look they're working out running backs. They've signed receivers. They're they're bringing in tight ends. Like they know where their holes are, and they're trying to address it as best they can. But I still think once once camp starts and you start to see rosters cut, that's when the Saints are going to have opportunities to bring in guys from other places that maybe. Don't have a roster spot that they see a perfect need. I mean, Taysom Hill is a great example of that when they signed him off the practice squad. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.